Okay, guys, we're finishing up the LS3 Holly split intake that uh, hopefully Eric Weingartner will do some dyno work with. And how I do it is I bolt it directly to the bench and I stuff the runners, and I mean stuff, with an old foam pillow. We leave one open. Let's see what we get. This actually is one of the lowest flowing runners, so let's take a look. Okay, now, I'll be honest, this is the way I have it mounted to the bench. I don't know the numbering on LS stuff. So, I'm going to show you how I did it on the sheet. Okay, this is just how I tested it. This is looking at the bottom of the intake. I made it like the old small block Chevy. I don't know if LS is the same way. All right, 1357, 2468. This is the one we just flowed. It was right around 433. Now, I did spend some time. I tried to look for the original paperwork where I figured out the curves and so forth to try to even out these runners the best I could. I couldn't find it, but I did find this, which is the Holly LS3. I didn't write down what head it was on. Obviously, the LS3 head, but I've had several come through on, on the here. Some of them nearing 400 CFM. This I don't think so. I think this was probably more like a 360, 370 CFM. But notice it says 770 carb. So I'm flowing through the cylinder head, this intake manifold, and the carburetor. But the part that's interesting is, let's just take a look at 600, right? 316.5, 317.2, 316.4, 317.2. Now those were runners 8642. 8642. Pretty close. Now this has had more work since that sheet because I did change the texture on it. So I wanted to reflow it and see what we got. But overall, one we got 440, 436.4, 433.6, We take our highest and our lowest and we subtract them. We got a difference of 11.6 delta CFM. Is that good? Yeah, it's pretty good. Does that mean it's going to be perfectly even on an engine? No, it won't. But I think it's a step in the right direction. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Did you notice that the flow bench was only producing like 24 inches of, of water? Because it was moving that much air. Okay. Now it is on the exhaust, so it's, it's pumping a lot of air through a single exhaust through an, a single a single intake port but it's blowing out okay that's an important point all right what's nice about blowing through it you can actually use your exhaust pito to do some air speeds through the port itself i'm going to see if i can show you this i don't know how well it's going to work Okay, as you can tell, we only took uh, three numbers as far as uh, port velocity. I tried to stay in the center of the port. Bottom, middle, 
top, bottom, top, middle, bottom. Uh, nice and even, right? Yeah, when I really go through it and uh, try to figure it out, I take more than three uh, air speeds, and I, I try to even them up as much as I can. Of course, you know, the part you need to remember is, is it's still only 28 inches on, on a bench, and at this point, this flows well enough, I'm only getting 24 out of the bench. It's out of capacity at that. Now it's a 600 bench, it should flow 600. You say so. Mine doesn't. Mine is also not new. It does have a couple of new motors in it, but some of them are probably pretty old. In any case, that doesn't mean it's completely inaccurate. The, the Flowcom is designed to adjust when it starts to lose depression. How well does that work? I don't know. But according to our, our paperwork, the work I did do on the runners, the roof, and the floor seems to have evened them out pretty well. Now, when I bolt this directly to the bench, when it was still wet after after washing it out, you could I had all eight runners open. You could see how much the center four blow out. Now, of course, that's going to be way less depression. In fact, it was only... Two, two inches of water is all the bench could produce because you have all these runners okay it cannot it cannot it cannot flow that much air but it is interesting to see just by putting your hand at the opening where the flow wants to go it wants to flow through the center ones so when we take a look at our sheet our only real low outer one is eight. Everything else is pretty good as far as the four outer ones. And our four inner ones are quite even. I think this is going to work out nice. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think uh, the best Eric got was around 630 horsepower out of his 408 LS3. I can't remember what heads he was running. I think he was running... Uh, the new, the new Holly Enforcers, which are pretty good. They flow, I think it was right around 340 when I tested them at, uh, at DVs. I think the Eric got very, very close numbers. So this manifold is not going to hold it back. Do I think he should test it with a spacer? Yeah, absolutely. The, you know, as tall as the plenum is, let's give a measurement on that. Okay, our plenum is over four inches deep. That's great, but if you put a, what I think you should do is a four hole tapered spacer, I think would really work well on this. But you know, it's same as anything. You could try it, it may not work worth a damn. But that's what's really nice about being able to do some dyno work. It may just like an open, who knows? In any case, I think it's gonna rock. And uh, I would like to thank Eric for uh, testing this because I think it's going to be cool. You have to remember, Eric, in all, he, he, we're competition. I don't consider us competition because he does it for a living and I do it just to stay out of trouble more or less, you know. That we're not really competition. I don't consider it either. Anyway, it's a, uh, doing it, trying to support a family, got to give the man credit. All right, guys. I don't really have anything good to say. Life has been uh, tough. But uh, working, working our way through it little by little. I got to... Uh, I do have to finish up. I think I'm going to do a, a video on valve stem heights. Because I'm finishing up the, uh, the TPI project, finally. And uh, my buddy Rob gave me a height gauge, which, of course, my OCD takes over, and every every height has to be, you know, as close as I can get it with stones. Makes life tough, but you know what? It makes a really nice product when you're all said and done. So I got to finish that up, and uh, the owner of the TPI would like every single port flowed 
also with the intake manifold all assembled. So that's probably a full weekend's worth of work, but I'm cool with that. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.